This is a 4-volt LED. Here you can clearly see its positive side, also known as the anode, and its negative side, or cathode. When I connect a battery to the correct terminals, the LED lights up beautifully. However, if I reverse the polarity and connect it the wrong way, the LED does not light up because LEDs are designed to allow current to flow in only one direction. To solve this issue and make sure the LED works regardless of how the battery is connected, we use a bridge rectifier. A bridge rectifier automatically corrects the polarity, allowing the circuit to function properly no matter how you connect the power supply. These here are some ready-made full-wave bridge rectifiers, which are commonly used in many circuits. But today, instead of using a pre-made component, I'll show you how to build your very own bridge rectifier from scratch using diodes. For this project, you will need four 1N4007 diodes, which are widely available and perfect for handling this task. By the end of this tutorial, you'll not only understand how a bridge rectifier works, but also gain the skill to make one yourself, an essential part of learning electronics. Now, let's begin building it step by step. This is the first diode. I'll bend the cathode pin of the diode and solder it directly to the anode pin of the LED. By doing this, I'm creating the first essential connection of the bridge rectifier. This connection ensures that current coming from one side of the power supply will have a proper path through the LED in only one direction. This is the second diode. This time, I'll bend the anode pin of the diode and solder it to the cathode pin of the LED. Now, if you look carefully, you'll notice that the LED has two diodes connected in opposite directions, one on its anode side and the other on its cathode side. These two diodes together form the first half of the bridge rectifier. Next, I'll apply some solder on the pins that I just connected. This is an important step because simply placing wires or diode pins together isn't enough for a reliable connection. Now comes the third diode. I'll take another 1N4007 diode and carefully check its polarity. Just like I soldered the second diode to the LED's cathode side, I will place this third diode in a similar manner. Then I'll take the fourth diode and solder it in the same way as the first diode, completing the bridge structure. This unique arrangement allows the diodes to control the direction of current flow, ensuring that the LED always lights up no matter which way the battery is connected. At this point, you'll notice that the pins of the third and fourth diodes are very close to each other and almost touching. To avoid a short circuit, I'll carefully make a little space between them. Once the spacing is adjusted, I'll solder the remaining pins of both diodes, completing the full wave bridge rectifier circuit. Next, I'll cut off all the extra pins to make the circuit neat and compact. After double checking that all connections are correct, it's time to test. When I connect the battery in the correct polarity, the LED lights up as expected. But the real magic happens when I reverse the battery connections. This time, the LED still lights up, thanks to the bridge rectifier. The bridge rectifier works by redirecting the flow of current through the LED, so that no matter how you connect the battery, the current always flows in the proper direction through the LED. This makes your circuit polarity protected, which means it is safe from accidental reverse connections. This simple concept is used in almost every power supply, battery charger, and adapter to convert AC into DC or to protect devices from reverse polarity damage. You can apply this same idea not just to LEDs, but also to motors, sensors, and other delicate electronic components.